welcome to Oak Park Maps Club, and where of course the children can. Please leave your message after the tone and we'll get back to you when we can. Have a good day, bye bye. In a world where many are indifferent to maths, top rated Oaks Park Maths Department stands out for its message that maths is fun. But for all their apparent success, running this department is no laughing matter. In his interests and interests of the school, we need that C grade almost at any cost. When it actually gets down to maths is maths, you know, it, is, it gets quite boring. It is still disappointing to see the results being so low. In the face of disappointment, apathy and dissent, what does it take to make a successful maths department tick? In many ways, Stephen Froggart's a lucky man. Oaks Park was a brand new school when he was appointed its first head of maths. When we first came to the school, there wasn't even a maths classroom to speak of. We were in porter cabins, and then we moved to a science lab to teach in there. And it wasn't until the third year, in fact, that we uh, began the year with maths classroom. So for the small stones, treatment A was better. For the large stones, treatment B was better. So um, treatment A was better again, wasn't it? Yeah. We've had to completely set up from new everything, all the courses, the, the GCSE maths, GCSE statistics, the A-level maths, they've all had to be done from new. And with all the new specs that are coming out, that's, 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 that's quite onerous. He had two or three years where he was, he was employing new members of staff, he was getting new children every year. He was building a department, building a team. So it, it was a difficult job, but it was exciting. OK, guys, stay on the left, go calmly and quickly. While Stephen had free reign to pick his own staff, he obviously had no say as to who they would teach. Welcome. Have a lovely day in maths, OK? Thank you. Enjoy the lesson, work hard. Don't forget to smile because it's maths and we love maths so much. Work hard, enjoy the lesson. As always, it's maths. Don't forget to smile, sir. Absolutely. That's the way. We love it. It's maths. And so another lesson begins. There we are. <laughs> we attract a variety of students of comprehensive ability. I suppose slightly down on the national average because of the two grammar schools taking away our brightest uh, sectors of the school population. Most students entering Oaks Park are expected to achieve below the national average. But the maths department has worked hard to buck that trend. In 2009, they're aiming to beat the previous year's figure of 70% A star to C pass rate and achieve their best results ever. To do this, they'll need the help of at least half these students. I never used to do well in maths. I didn't like it. And I thought I'd done all right. And I'd done all right, but I missed a C by like two marks. It was a bit of a wake up call because where we're, we had mocks and you don't really take them seriously. and. I guess once I realised I'd got the, done the real thing and I'd let myself down. These students took their maths GCSE in November, but didn't achieve their potential. I didn't do well beginning of this year. I mucked around in class and stuff like that. I didn't take it seriously. So I got a D. If I didn't have muck around, I would have got like a B, but I can't do anything about it now. So. But the maths department believes he can. This intensive course that Mrs Jutley has put together is the same sort of thing that you would get at one of these Easter residential events. This evening, they're launching their first dedicated action plan aimed at those students most likely to get a C in their summer resets. Of these 28 hand-picked students, half of them will need a C grade to make up the department's best pass rate ever. We believe in you and we want to convince you tonight to believe in yourselves. You can do it. Every one of you here, so far you've got a D on that certificate. When they come out in August, we want you to open that envelope and hold up a C grade because that C is what unlocks doors. That C is what opens opportunities and makes things happen. And you know that if you want that C, that want is going to start now. Students are offered after-school revision classes, mentoring sessions and a host of take-home resources, including an Oaks Park Maths CD. Each student also has a personalised breakdown of how they performed in their November exams and a plan for how to address weak areas. We're not asking you to revise the whole of the GCSE syllabus, remember that. 
We're asking you to pick up only those bits which will lift you from a D to a C. And what you've got to remember is they're all here to help you, not to be against you. And they've proven that by doing this. Are you going to do it then? What are you going to aim for? A B. A B, good man. Oh, it's good that the school's actually doing it because I know people who got Ds in other schools and they, the school never done anything like this. Like they just left them and didn't get any help like we're getting. I wanted to, to get a C because I know what it feels like not to get a C and I don't want to feel like it again. And they're not the only ones to enjoy such personalised support. OK, guys, uh, assessment four. You've been told of this test uh, last week and yesterday as well. Detailed tracking and targeting of every math student starts as soon as they enter the school. Uh, every five to six weeks we give them an assessment just to see uh, what's, what stage or how, how much progress they've made since their last test. When we track our students' progress, we make sure we've got a lot of detail on each student. This is something that we've developed for use in the department. Um, this sort of spreadsheet helps me collect data in quite a detailed way about the students, really for passing on to other teachers, for example, the teachers they get in the following year. So I've got detail about not just their end of year level, but detail about their number skills, their algebra skills, shape and data skills. So it breaks it down into individual strengths and weaknesses, which we can share with parents. What we're going to be looking at today is percentages. Now there are four skills that you need to have by the end of today's lesson. Despite the enthusiasm at the launch, Raj Jutley's revision class is looking rather empty. Is that the answer? There's still some students who haven't attended. I'm going to have to see exactly what they're doing and see why they're not attending. But now we're into the third week, so there's no reason why students aren't attending. Because at the end of the day, I am bending over backwards for these students to get the C. Today, Year 7 are getting their assessment results back. And I've written, also written your previous level as well to see whether or not you've maintained your um, previous level or whether you've gone above it or below. Rafi? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 5C. Oh! So you all should have, yes? Right? So you've done the first one, you know that 400 euro notes will give you 400. Yeah. But 750 euro notes, isn't it? It started off well, just going through this. Just some careless errors. You got a 4B. Oh, no! Oh, it's fine. It's good. What's wrong with that? I used to do 5C. OK, well, you need to think of ways to make that into a 5C. Disappointing or good, students are encouraged to take their marked papers home for parents to add comments. Got one here which says she needs to develop her understanding of equations. Uh, looking at the, the values used there and relationship between fractions, decimals, percentages. So they've identified a couple of weaknesses. This is really useful to us for two reasons, really. One reason that it helps the students identify areas where they're going to improve, but also the best reason is that the, the parents get to see what maths their children are doing in the lessons and they get to talk about it. And talking about the maths is a great way to learn it. Now, not only do Oaks Park set up this wonderful way of tracking pupils so that people know where the students are at any given time. But what they then do is they say, yeah, OK, but so what? So if this is where the kids are and we want them to get to here, what should we do now? So Oaks Park take the tracking further and they say, it's not tracking, it's not just monitoring, it's intervention. So it's taking this assessment and working out what we should do. Just sit down, guys. Today, Raj Jutley has located three of her missing CD students. We've set up the programme so you guys come to every single one. If you miss one more, then basically your, this, your place on the programme will be taken away. I'm not really retaking the maths exam. Why not? I'm just not resetting it. OK, because you were put on it. Um, but I haven't like filled out a form or anything or paid for it. OK, so you don't want to sit these on? No, I don't. Because no, no. for the course I'm doing in college, I don't really need a math GCC. What about later? Yeah, but later I can we sit if I need one. Seriously think about it. The GCSE maths is really important. That's the one that's, you know, employers are going to look for. All right, Simona, you need to go home, think about it. But it's not just students who need keeping on board. 
the philosophy here is that happy staff make good teachers. So the department makes a point of regular nights out. All right, now you need a balloon to make a pie symbol, and you've got two minutes to make a pie symbol with your balloon, OK? You've seen how it's done. We've, we've actually been doing meals every, uh, every term now, and it's just our way of socially being together. That, that's that cohesion in the department doesn't come just from teaching next door to somebody. I think it brings all of us closer, and obviously if, we're, if we work better as a team because of this, then obviously it's going to have a positive impact on kids. I think it's nice to socialise together and talk about your families, just like any friends, when you get to know each other better, there's some um, greater cooperation. And it's really nice when, you know, when you talk about things like, you know, uh, how was your last term or how was your holidays or, you know, someone is um, getting married or someone is having a baby. These little things really count, you know. You feel really, um, you feel like very honoured and very special. It's not just it's burning my tongue, it's burning my throat. Mm. <laughs> it's very difficult to get people who are busy, who have families, who have lives, to say, OK, at the end of a really hard working day, and it is really hard working in the school, I'm going to give up another few hours and go out with my colleagues. But the payback from that is immense. Congratulations to Ruth on becoming an HLTA! I think sorting out the, the staff even comes before any work you do thinking about what you're going to do with the students. Because if the teachers are working with the same voice and the same excitement, the same passion, vision, all that the, the, the team represents, then the students will get the same deal, the same good value. So uh, yes, it is teachers first, colleagues first, the team ethos, the team spirit, and then on into the students. Meanwhile, there's been a setback. One of the students, Duane, has just been taken off the booster course. Most of the lesson he was just staring out the window rather than doing what I'd asked him to do. The revision lesson before I asked him to leave, he was, you know, talking when I was talking. It's things like that. It's, you know, everybody in here wants to get that C and that's why they're here. And I don't think it's fair on all the other students. They basically just explained that they didn't think there was a point of me being on the course at the moment. I don't know if it's permanent or temporary though. That's the only thing, nothing really I can see for me to get thrown off the course like I wasn't rude in any way to anyone. I was doing my work, maybe I didn't put in enough work during the courses. That's the only reason I can think of. But they still gave me what I needed to do and emailed me with past papers to show like, even though you're not on the course like, you're not going to let you miss out. So I was still providing for what I need. I just got to do it now in my own time. But from a whole school perspective, taking Dwayne off the course is just not an option. Next time, how the tight-knit maths team copes with a communication breakdown. As far as I know, Dwayne's not on the programme. In his interests and interests of the school, we need that C grade almost at any cost. And why recreational maths and good teamwork add up for staff and students. Come on! 63! 63 in 60 seconds. Another record by Tanisha, guys. Well done.